How are you doing this morning? Are you well? Yeah. Um, I was here last year at about the same time, and I, um, I spoke about running a race. Um, I failed. I didn't run my race real well. Um, I didn't get to my marathon. In fact, about four weeks after I spoke, I had an injury, and that basically was the year. So this year I'm going to speak about injuries. Um, <laughs> just joking. But I want to thank Pastor Warren and Beck and the team for having me. It's always fun to come home in the sense of this is where I grew up. I was thinking about things that happened in this building. My call to ministry was right here. Wow. My, uh, my grandfather's funeral was here. My, my, seeing my family do amazing ministry has been in this place. I have cut my teeth in so many ways. I think my first ever message was horribly bad at a youth event outside in the back auditorium before it was a kid's area. Like that's, I think I used to love going to, after Sunday night church, we used to have the best food. <laughs> like there was a cafe out there. Did anyone ever, anyone ever remember that cafe? I ate so much free food. That was just my, that's my memories. If you remember, I was probably a punk. I'm so sorry. I'm not anymore. I'm just a larger punk. Um, I've just passed the mantle. But I wanted to say, um, my wife isn't with me this morning. My youngest decides to go and make sports teams, um, some state sports teams. And so he trains from 8 a.m. for one team and then goes to the next state sports team at 10 a.m. to midday. And so they aren't with me. So I think I bought a photo so you can still say they exist. Uh, you can see that. If they don't have it, I'm okay. I saw it this morning. <laughs> it's all good. Shake your head. It doesn't exist. All right. Believe you believe me? <laughs> she was wearing a beautiful pink dress at a wedding. It was that, that photo. You know that one. Yeah. <laughs> Let me pray. God, I thank you for who you are. I thank you this morning. As I get out of the way long enough, you will speak through me. That these words just aren't accidental, but they're on time, on purpose for every individual. That as it says, that this word is living, active, sharper than any two-edged sword and will cut down to the very core and it will divide spirit and flesh. So this morning, come and move. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Warren, oh, there they are. Look at them, see? That was us at a wedding. All the kids are almost as taller than Riv. It's actually crazy. She feels short now. Um, so it was, you can tell, that, thank you for that. Um, last week, Pastor Warren spoke about building your life. And in building your life, he spoke about the Word of God being the thing that we build our foundations on. And as we build our foundations on that, he spoke about cracks that can form. He did mention a hose that went under a building for a very long time and then it had to soften it so the cracks could come back together. And that took some time. And I was thinking about how long things take sometimes in life. Have you ever noticed how long things take? And in, on the journey of life, as I spoke about running, there's lots of things happen on a journey. Uh, there's exhilarating highs and phenomenal lows. The worst part is that sometimes there's a long road in between. And, and in fact, life isn't lived on mountaintops and valleys. It's lived in the in-between. Yeah. And, and the in-between is what I want to speak about this morning. So he was in the Garo tribe of Assam in India in the 1800s. I don't know if you can hear that rattle. The... When a man named Nuxang first ever used the words to the well-known song, I have decided to follow Jesus. The story goes like this. An angry village chief summoned all the villagers. He then called the family who had first converted to faith to face public execution. Moved by the Holy Spirit, the man sung his reply. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. Enraged at the refusal of the man, the chief ordered his archers to arrow down the two children. As both boys laid there dying on the floor, the chief asked, Will you deny your faith? You have lost your children and you will lose your wife as well. But the man replied again singing, Though none go with me, still I will follow, no turning back. The chief was beside himself with fury and ordered the wife to be killed as well. In a moment, she joined her sons in eternity. Now he asked for the last time. I'll give you one more opportunity 
to deny your faith and live. In the face of death, the man sang. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. And in the moment, he, he too joined his sons and his wife in eternity. But with the deaths, a miracle took place. The chief who had ordered the killings was moved by the faith of the man. And in spontaneous confession of faith, he declared, I too belong to Jesus. In that moment, a whole village turned to Jesus because of one man's refusal to deny Jesus. See, there is mountains and there is valleys in life. I I remember a fair few of them in my life, like the moment when we had our first son. It was an amazing experience falling pregnant to the worst journey of getting a a baby out. It took us seven months of a nine-month journey to get a baby out. Zion was born 30 weeks, 31 weeks, and it was nine weeks premature. My wife almost died, Valley, trying to work it all out. Can I tell you, mountains and valleys, they exist. They're real, they're raw, and some of, the, some of you will be in a valley today. Can I tell you, it doesn't stop at that valley, because the sun will come up tomorrow. And some of you are on amazing mountaintops. Can I tell you something? Don't stop there because that mountaintop is not where life is supposed to be lived and stayed at. Because there is so much more than just that one mountaintop. There's a life to be lived. See, it's not lived on mountaintops and valleys. It's lived in the in-between. It's lived in the consistencies, the normals, the everydays. I'm so sorry if you wanted an amazing message to tell you that it's going to be one big exhilarating journey. In fact, it's going to be boring. This journey is going to be mundane. It's just, just going to be all every day. You're going to wake up tomorrow morning. Some of you will be on holiday still, and, but some of you are going to get up at 6 a.m. and go to work. And you're going to come home at 5, 6 p.m. at night and have, make dinner and go to bed at 10, maybe watch some tennis in between because the Australian Open starts tomorrow. Very important. But then we're going to wake up at 6 a.m. the next morning. And go to, it's going to be mundane. But we can't afford to have a Sunday spirituality as it will not survive. We need to have a Monday practicals to our theology. You need to live this thing out on your Mondays. Otherwise, your Sundays are useless. An hour and a half on a Sunday will not change your life. It's the everydays with Jesus that Warren spoke about building your life about last week that will change your life. So if you've got your Bible, why don't you turn it to Romans 12, verse 1. Love this scripture. It's one of those ones that I love to read at the start of the year. It says this, Romans 12, 1 to 2. I, 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 I did bring this Bible, um, but I was saying to Warren, I started a new Bible this year, and I don't like it yet. Anyone started a new Bible, and it's just so hard to read from? I don't know about you, but it's just, anyway, I'm learning. God, forgive me. I'm getting better. It says this, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing before God, because this is your true and proper worship. And do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. It's a great scripture. I, I, I get... I go to the message on this one because for some reason the message speaks my language. It makes it real ordinary for an ordinary kid like me. It says this. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God has done for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit in and that without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out and readily recognize that He wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you always dragging you down to the level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you. 
develops well-formed maturity in you. The last 20 years of my life have been kind of fun. It's been, uh, uh, we were talking this morning, my wife and I, Riv and I, that we've been married for 19 years this year. So we've got, like, the last 20 years has been spent together. And we're like, there are so many mountaintops over the last 20 years. We, we looked at the mountaintops of every one of our kids being born. I, I think of the last just five years, 2018, seeing tens of thousands come to Jesus in Kenya. Like, it was phenomenal. It was a mountaintop experience. And that mountaintop, I got on a plane, flew home to the, probably the lowest valley I've ever experienced with my mum passing. On the, just literally flew in, and that was the story I got. What, what about the mountaintop of 2019 when we went through all of that, where we traveled and saw and, uh, thousands across America find Jesus, and we thought we were going from strength to strength, and we were going all the way over to the next, the pandemic. Uh, and I thought ministry was over. We, we used all our savings over the last three years to try and get ourselves on our feet, we, had, we literally had nothing, because, but we were doing it for the gospel, so we didn't really care. To the mountaintop in the midst of the valley, starting a business, <laughs> which has become successful, which I'm like, what the, God, you want me to be in business, and I don't get it, but okay, I'll go with it. To the mountaintop of preaching last year, and it's kick-starting again, God going, hey, I can still use you in the area of ministry, and we traveled the states, so people make decisions for Jesus, and again, I'm back here going, God, what do you have for me in 2023? And he's like, there's one theme I want you to understand, Joel, and I want you to share it. It's the in-between. The everyday ordinaries of walking with me made every mountaintop and valley never define you. See, your every days shouldn't def should define you, not the mountaintop and the valley. So you're going to go through some things and you can either live from that place for the rest of your life, which I can probably, we can probably know some friends who have done that, or you can live from the valley and they're bitter and twisted and walk around and you're like, ah, oh, I don't want to be around that person because their valley is determined them are. So three points today. Quite simply, I'm, gonna, I'm, not, a, I'm not like a, a teacher like my sister. I, I, I want to inspire you to live. So let's do this. She does. No, she does it as well. It's, <laughs> it's okay. I'm like, you got models. They, they, my dad's heckling me. If you wanted to know what it was like growing up in the Bennett household, that was the moment. Hey, have a look at the screens. You may have seen this before. From the mouths of babes, right? On a roller coaster ride, he, he didn't swear. <laughs> he didn't get uh, anxious. His only thing was hallelujah. Can I give you a point this year? Don't lose your hallelujah. Wow. Wow. It was a, a, a five year old boy on a roller coaster giving me a, a thing for my life. Don't lose your hallelujah. Don't let a mountaintop or valley determine your praise. Yeah. Because this year it really could. It, it could be the thing that stops you from going all in with Jesus. It could be this thing that stops you from reading your Bibles when you stop your hallelujah. See, I believe praise gives us access to God's point of view. See, he's ordained praise so much so that if we don't praise, the rocks will. Proverbs 18, 20 to 21 says this, From the fruit of the mouth, a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death and those who will eat its fruit. I don't know about you. If you lose your hallelujah, you start to, to go to bitterness. Your language locates your perspective. It's what, what you're talking about. What are you giving time to? What are you giving air time to this year? I know sometimes in the valley it's hard to be positive. Or sometimes we, it's even hard to see the other side. 
So what are you speaking into existence in 2023? What are you reading that's going to put into the place the, the, the everyday ordinaries in-betweens? What is it in Mark? I, I was thinking about Mark and I was like, for me, Mark is the, the first five books, first five chapters are the immediacy of the miracles. That it's immediately, immediately, immediately. What about you? Everyone has something different about what they're reading, but it's the, the ordained scripture that is life-breathed and should be shared in community. It produces power, it produces faith in your highs and your lows. Have you all got a Sunday school song if you went through Sunday school? I've got a Sunday school song that I always remember. My one is Jesus loves me, this I know for the Bible. I, I, I remember singing it over and over again. But I, I don't know if I, before I sung it whether I knew that the Bible would tell me that, but I, 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 I've, I've suddenly learned that's what the Bible tells me, that Jesus loves me. So if you don't read your Bible, let me tell you, you're missing out on being told Jesus loves you. But let me tell you, when you're in the midst of a valley, what comes back to, a, to existence or back to remembrance is a simple Sunday school song. And everyone probably knows it. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to me belong, they are weak, but he is in the midst of the valley, he, I am weak and he is strong. It comes back to remembrance every time. And it pushes me in my everyday ordinaries. So it's those Sunday school song confessions. Do you have some? I remember hearing them all my life growing up. I remember listening to the piano being played and hymns being sung that have become like guideposts to my journey in life. And they remember, remind me of who he is when the season seems long. Acts 1.8 says this, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. This scripture I live by. And I, I always ask the question, who is your Jerusalem? Who is your Judea? Is it, that would be your greater region that we live in. And then Samaria is to the ends of the earth. The ends of the earth right now would probably be America somewhere. Definitely feels like it. But I believe in the moments when you feel caught, trapped, the Holy Spirit comes on you when you start to praise, when you start to remind your soul the great things He has done. And he, your perspective starts to shift when you start to praise. See, the promises of God. There's 7,487 promises. Let me just give you eight of them. He promises to strengthen you in Ephesians 3.14, to give you rest in Matthew 11.28, to take care of all your needs in Philippians 4.19, to answer your prayers in Matthew 7.7, 7, to work all things for good in Romans 8.28, freedom from sin in John 8.36, nothing can separate you from God in Romans 8.38, and eternal life in John 3.16. That's just eight. You've got 7,479 more to choose from, but will you know them? It doesn't matter whether you're 87 years old or 15 years old this morning, do you know them? 15 years old, you should start to get to know them so you can live in your in-between. And when you're 87 years old, get to know them again because you've got a lot of in-betweens. There's going to be mountains and there's valleys. But there's a lot of days that are ordinary. I love in 2 Corinthians 10, 14, it says the weapons of our warfare aren't carnal, but they are mighty. They're powerful through God. They're pulling down our strongholds. So when it feels like it's normal, long, praise. Don't lose your hallelujah, because I can tell you that a valley is around the corner, and I'll let you know that a mountain tops on its way, but life isn't lived on them. It's lived on the road in between. Number two, mountaintops and valleys shouldn't determine if you follow Jesus. They shouldn't determine if you follow Jesus. It says in Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it doesn't say 
set up a camp in the middle of the valley. It says, I walk through it. And I will fear no evil. You might be in the midst of the valley. Take heart from David who says, in the midst of it, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Why? Because his rod and his staff, they comfort you. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. And my cup runs over. Who in the midst of a valley has their cup running over? Those who are filled with Jesus. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Good and bad moments are going to come, but they don't determine your life. My decisions in the everyday ordinary determine 99.99% of my life and how I respond to both great and adverse moments. Something I've worked out in all those moments is that it shouldn't determine how I follow Jesus or if I follow Jesus. In 2020, I took a role with a ministry and I got the opportunity to sit down with a pastor in India. He, he, he was really disconcerting doing it over Zoom, but as I sat with him, we just got to ask some questions and I asked him a question, Sir, how, how large is your church? And he goes, at last count, our network of people who attend our church is 1.2 million people. We will never hear of this man's church, but has 1.2 million people attending it all over India. And I said, can you just tell me some of the, some of the stories? And he tells you some great stories of breakthrough. And he tells me, can I, Joel, can I tell you one story? I said, tell me a story. He goes, there was a pastor we sent out to a tribe. And he got to the tribe and the only house in the, the tribe was next to the most extreme Hindu family in the area. He had a son and a daughter and next to a house of Hindu extremists. And uh, he said that they lived their life. They set up a church. The, the, son, the Hindu sons were coming of age. And at, uh, at 16 years old, they've got a rite of passage. And the sons were almost at the age and the, they sat down with their parents and the Hindu family. And from our understanding, the mother said, for your 16th rite of passage, you need to assault or rape the girl next door who was 12 years old. So one day, this young girl was on her way home from school in her school uniform, backpack on, walking home with her brother, and she was stopped by a group of Hindu like extremists in the midst of this town square, raped, left naked, laid there. And I'm hearing this story and being rattled because I'm like, this is what people go through trying to follow Jesus. And here I am just trying to get to church on Sunday morning by 10.15. I mean 10. And so the, the, the company I worked with sent in counsellors. They didn't send in a Bible because the Bible right at that moment probably wasn't the thing she needed. She needed to be able to speak through the experience and talk through her healing. And they started to partner with the Word of God. And as they went through the process, they did months and months and months. It wasn't a week's thing. It actually was years. By the end of the first year, they sat with her and said, we just want to be able to see how far you have come. And this young girl, who used to be part of the church choir, who her, her, her thing was to sing as a little Indian girl with her, her family. She didn't quote a Bible verse, although she probably could have. She, read, she sang one of the most famous hymns of, Hindu, of, of Indian background, which is, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. She's a 12-year-old girl who's been through hell and back, but still has enough in her to say, I will follow him no matter the story, no matter the journey, because the everyday ordinary is, you know what, he's with me. He got me through that, he'll get me through that, and he's with me today. I don't know what your story is. Maybe you've had that kind of story. Jesus is the only one that can get you through that day in, day out. You need him on your journey. You need professional help, yes, but you need to partner that with the Holy Spirit who will walk you through that journey because you can't decide, oh, one day I won't follow him. I'm going to deconstruct just a No, 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 you've got to go. I'm going to follow him. Your yes is your yes.
So have you determined to follow him day in and day out in the boring, ordinary, normal? Reading the New Testament this year, a couple of Psalms and Proverbs here and there, have you determined that you'll follow him, not just engage with it every now and then? Let's get the team to come. Number three is mountains and valleys didn't determine his love for you. So how you respond to a mountain or a valley doesn't and didn't determine his love for you. You have to understand whatever and however you respond, his love is not conditional. It doesn't run out. It doesn't fall short. And we will fall short. But he, Jesus, never will. His love isn't changed by your tomorrow. It isn't changed by your failures. His love is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is with you in and out of it. He wants to be the one who walks you through it. He's the, in fact, if we could look back and look at the old footsteps, little poem, he's the only one who's carried you through. His love was never determined by how you would act. His love has never changed. It's consistent. It's different. It's not like yours and mine. It it walks with us. It talks with us. It shouldn't change how we respond then. Too often right now, I I feel, oh, God wasn't with me. Oh, I went through this and I I just couldn't find it. Why would bad things happen to good people? There's lots of different stories we can give you answers for. But let me tell you, the people of Israel, would go through something of, a, of life-changing magnitude. The, the waters would be split and for some reason, they would stop in the middle of it all and build an altar. Have you read that and got frustrated? Like, they're coming for you, they're coming for you, don't stop. But they would always stop and build an altar. I always got a little frustrated by it, but I, I did surf when I was younger and something I learned was that if you can pick a point on the coastline and stay in line with that, you can stay in alignment. It's kind of like the altar of the Old Testament where we set up something so we can pass by it and remember that's where God did that. That's where God did that. Remember, remember, like I, I drive west, past Westmead Hospital and go, remember when God saved my son and my wife? And with, Do you remember when that happened? I, I can remember 16 years old on my knees crying for an hour because that's where God met me. Have you built some things and remem- remembrances to what God has done? Because sometimes we need remembrance. God doesn't. He's got a long memory, but short with your sin. He says he forgets them, but remembers you. But sometimes when you're, on the, when you're in the in-between, you get a little foggy. Over the past five years, in particular, I started journaling moments of God's breakthrough. So I can go back and rig them. This is when that happened. This is when that happened. September in 2021 is when we started our business. I remember when it happened. I remember where I was. See, Jesus conquered the greatest valley and has climbed the greatest mountain for you. Can I tell you, He is the only God who has walked the in-between. He's walked the dusty roads. And in the midst of it all, He stopped and paused and stood up for what God had called Him to. And in that moment, all of the worlds when we don't believe you. They put him on, they nailed him, put him on a cross. Why? For love for us. For you and I. That we don't have to live in sin and shame and death any longer, but we can live a life whole in our everyday ordinary in-betweens. You don't have to live in any shame any longer. Why? Because he loves you enough to take a cross that he didn't deserve. He took a beating that he wasn't made for him. And he took a grave that was made for Joseph. The most phenomenal thing I can tell you today is that that grave is no longer, no longer got anybody in it. It's empty. He's not there because he is alive. 
and only a live Savior. See, we can go to the graves of every known religion, but not Jesus. So this morning, I want to ask you the question, where do you stand with Jesus? Where do you stand in this season? Are, are you living for Him? Are you forgiven, set free? And, or are you maybe here by chance or accident? And I would say there's none of those. And I would ask you this question right at the start of 2023. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour? Do you know Him as your best friend? And I want to do it with every... Like, Usually I'd ask with every eye closed and head bowed, but for some reason this morning, I want to ask you with every eye open and head up and make a stand for Jesus. Do you know Him? If you can't say yes and you're not living for Him, well, sin has got the better of you. I can ask you to respond and just go, Joel, it's me. If I can do it now, I'll pray a prayer and then we'll start going. No one, it's fine because then it means we're on a season and a journey. We can get this together. So when I say three, if that's you and your Joel, I want to make a decision for Jesus. One, two, three. So now this morning, which means we've all had mountaintops and valleys, usually means we're all on the same journey. It says yes to Jesus. How will you live this life this year? Will you let the seasons get the better of you? Or will you live consistent? with Jesus why because his praise your, your praise shouldn't change with your mountaintops and valleys if you follow him shouldn't change mountaintops and valleys and why because Jesus hasn't changed his love for you in the mountaintops and valleys can I pray for you Hope Point God I thank you for every person in this room that this morning you come and give them strength and equip their, their hallelujah for this year. That they would praise the whole way through. That as they start to walk this journey out this year, that they'll, you know, I pray there is some exhilarating highs in it all. God, we thank you that there's going to be amazing things happen, great successes and good rewards. God, we thank you that all these moments are going to happen. And if there's people in the midst of the valley, God, we pray for them that you would give them the strength to walk through it, that they would not stop in the midst of the valley and they would not fear because you are with them. And in the midst of it all, God, you would walk us through it and continue our steps because the good steps of a, of the steps of a man are ordered by the Lord. Would you equip us with your Holy Spirit this year? That wherever we are, we are, whatever we're doing, that we would be that witness on our journey. In Jesus' name.